So it has been pulled towards the case and now it will be put inside next. So this is the uh, wooden structure or of the case where the animal will be put for translocation next. So this is the case. Now it is being pulled through uh, into the case. So very interesting, uh, but very smooth technology. And uh, here in Assam, we have mastered this and fine tuned. And we have done more than 50 such translocations. And I'm proud to uh, tell you that without a single casualty. Next. So the animal is safely inside the case. Next. And the case is being loaded into the truck. Next. And finally, taking a 300 kilometer journey. And even in the journey, you have to maintain protocol so that the safety of the animal can be ensured. And the animals, the actually a mother and son group, and they were rescued together and shifted to Manas National Park and being released. Next, please. So after release also, your job is not over. You have to monitor the animal may stay. Next. So various methods, so radio coloring, then telemetry receiver, and you also have a camera trap. So camera trap is not only for uh, movement, but for other smaller mammals also, you can see the population estimation and all that. Next, please. Then physical restraint, I'll very shortly, physical restraint is not something very new. It is old, mostly used for snakes. Next, you go on, go on. So you use uh, various physical devices like net and trap, next. So various types So everybody is familiar with this type of thing. Then you have cannon net that you can fire from a distance and will drop on the target, next. So net capture for antelope in open grassland in Africa, next. Box trap for smaller mammals. Then catch all poles, next. Cat graspers, next. Then comes the chemical restraint, which has been fine-tuned uh, to a great extent. And I must say, this is also the contribution of the veterinary scientists over the years. And next, please. So basically, uh, these drugs that we administer from a distance has to be administered intramuscularly because we have to dirt. And then uh, most drugs administered uh, in wildlife are done through intramuscular route. Next. Some of the anesthetics are used intravenously, but here you have that option. And you don't have the option of uh, pre-anesthetic evaluation of the animal. So the safety of the drug is much a necessity. So various equipments are to be used uh, to basic principle is to avoid disturbing the animal, uh, uh, the induction phase, and uh, the effectiveness of the drug to be injected. Drugs can be injected using a handheld syringe. So these are all technology, handheld syringe. Of course, everybody knows that. But pole syringe or jab stick, blow pipe, pneumatic gun, and gun-powered uh, charged gun. Next. The handheld uh, syringe that I said uh, we use it, but disposable syringe. Next, please. Pole syringe. Suppose animal is uh, two meter away. You can't reach to the animal. And Suppose you insert your hand, the animal will scratch or bite. So here, this is basically an extension of the normal series. And, and when uh, this can be used only when the animal is contained in a trap. Next. So you have various designs of pole series. So actually, as I said, these are extension of our normal hypodermic syringe. So you can only inject from a meter or two meter away or even more. Next. But animal has to be cornered. Otherwise, it is very difficult or it may cause injury. Then drug administered inside the crate. Suppose, for example, I know it from Kaziranga National Park to Manas National Park. Now, in between, somewhere the animal uh, have become nervous or started disturbing. Then we have to give some sedative drugs. How we will give? At that level, cannot use a dirt gun because it will be Injurious. So in, in such situation, we need a zap stick by which we can administer the sedative drug. Next, please. So uh, we also have the blow gun. And here, actually, it's a very simple form of pneumatic gun. You use your lung power by which you blow, and the syringe flies and hits the animal and administers the drug. Next. 
So various types of modern guns that are generally used for other large animal. Next. So the assortment of accessories, next. And these are all the, uh, the, like blanks, cartridges, the pneumatic dart delivery. So for other thin skin animal, these are used. Uh, you have rifles up to 100 years, you can shoot with that. Pistols, uh, with short range, next. Uh, uh, darts with explosive discharge that I have just shown you. Uh, we use small explosive, uh, explosive cap uh, between the plunger of the syringe and the cap. Uh, inject speed is, see, it's very fast, 0 0.001 second. So uh, this may cause tissue damage because it is a little bit traumatic. So experience is required. Next. Then uh, we have the centrally acting compounds uh, that are being used and becoming very popular in large animal. Of course, uh, we here in Assam, we only use for rhinos uh, because we have undulating areas, we have rivers. So our animals should not go and uh, sink in water. Uh, but rhino, we take protection uh, because it is relatively manageable size. So the opiates are potent synthetic opiates and used for immobilization of ungulates including rhino. Next. Uh, cyclohexamines, ketamine, thylatamine, very popular. The only limitation is that you do not have a reversal agent for this. Agent. But we use in combination with some uh, other alpha-2 adenoceptor agonic uh, anesthetic drugs. Next. Then these alpha-2 uh, drugs, dilazine and meditomidine are very popular. And these are potent drugs and safe drugs. Even if you wish, you cannot kill an animal by overdosing also. So these are beautiful drugs. And I must say that uh, if you talk about the development of technology, these are our technology. Without which today, uh, the wildlife department can manage wildlife. Next. Uh, we also go for various drug combinations and uh, synergistic combinations and all that. Next. The drugs are complementary. And I, have feel, I feel proud that we have standardized drugs uh, for every species, different type of drug. But uh, after a lot of experiments, our scientists, they have concluded that this type of combination is best for this type of uh, animal. So I'll not go in detail. Next, a similar script, so rhino and elephant and every animal, you name it, we have the drug. The problem is that availability of these drugs are because these drugs are not manufactured in India, procuring from abroad, first thing, they are expensive. Second thing, a lot of restriction of procurement. But anyway, we are managing with that. Uh, maybe in future, things will be better. Next. Then uh, an ideal drug or drug combination by the present day wildlife vet. Uh, so these are, of course, theoretical. Next. Uh, disadvantage of chemical restraint. Uh, difficulty in getting closer to the subject because the animal is dangerous. So uh, animal, sometimes we do not use drugs. Next, please. Next. So uh, say this is uh, swamp deer we are translocating. Next. And most important thing is that when we are planning to use drugs for wild animal, we have to take the responsibility of the life of that animal because these are uh, scheduled animal and any harm to this animal, uh, you are responsible. So you have to take that responsibility of the life of that animal. Next. And healthy animals are to be identified when you go for immobility. And finally, the technology, which is new, that is the immunocontraceptives. Wherever you think a population has increases, we have immunocontraceptives, GnRH vaccine, it is called can be used both in male and female. The protocols are available, uh, but in India, we, we are yet to use, uh, even for experiment. One project was sanctioned by Project Elephant Directorate. For some reason, it didn't materialize. But now, uh, many foreign countries, they are using the GNR vaccines for effective population controls. Where we can't provide space to the animals, we may have to think of population control for larger uh, animals. For smaller animals, of course, we can go for uh, the uh, physical sterilization technique. Next. So with this, I conclude my lecture. Uh,
a combination of many things, but my focus was on the use of modern technology for management of the conflict with animals. So I conclude with this and I now uh, send it back to uh, Delhi for uh, any questions that would like to answer. Thank, thank you. you. Thank sir. you very much, Dr. Sharma, for this excellent talk, for your love and affection towards the wildlife and especially elephant. And not only elephants, you have told many other animals, I know, and uh, even the small animals. Uh, so, Dr. Tripathi, sir, if you say, uh, if you allow, we can take some questions. I think that's why we can, we can take some questions, no? There, there's some uh, questions in chat. So, uh, uh, Dr. Murli is asking how to contain the population of peacocks, uh, which is havocing uh, our grain fields. Any suggestion, Dr. Sama? Sir, peacock is our national bird and it is a <laughs> seedle one species. So, I think uh, before we uh, plan anything, it has to be a big, uh, you know, political decision. The government has to decide. But the sterilization uh, of the bird is not impossible. Even, uh, even uh, hormonal implants can be used, but we can also physically sterilize. And capturing these birds are not difficult. So we can uh, sterilize the birds, the females, and then we can use a metal tag so that we can identify that, yes, this animal was sterilized. Uh, like that. I think uh, that can be one solution. But in many areas, uh, peacock are not to be seen. So maybe translocation can be an, can be an option. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Uh, Dr. Rathor is asking, how to ensure the safe forest for the wildlife, which is a big uh, challenge? Yeah, excuse me, sir. How to ensure... What was the question? How to ensure the safe yeah. forest uh, for, the, for the wildlife, which is a big challenge. Yes, sir. Indeed, it is a big challenge. But the solution I have uh, told you at the very beginning, because until and unless we be behave in a responsible way, we are behaving uh, irresponsibly. We are just increasing the human population. And when we have become number one in India, uh, in the world, we still don't stop. We have to do something, uh, act uh, rationally, and we have to cut down our population because the way we are going, we are not leaving any space for any other species. So this is quite uh, selfishness. And yeah. in this selfish behavior of the human being in our country in particular, and as a whole, the whole world, I think uh, we were uh, vanishing, all the species will be extinct. And uh, ultimately, we will also be extinct because one species cannot live alone. It's a biodiversity which is required, and every species has to leave space for the other species. Yes, Geo yes. or Ginado. Geo or Ginado. Saiga, Saiga. And now, uh, Dr. Sarma, in the meantime, can you just suggest something? Uh, because there is a monkey menace uh, in Delhi also, in parliament, in every ministry, everywhere you will find uh, monkey. So, uh, do you have any solution? What is the solution, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is solution. In fact, uh, two of our state, particularly one state, our Himachal Pradesh, they have adopted the monkey sterilization program some 10, 12 years back. And when they started uh, sterilization program, they did some mistake. Initially, they did by the open uh, surgery method and monkey, they do sterilization. And later on, they learned that the uh, and uh, laparoscopic surgery is the answer. And I know that by now they have done almost 1,40,000 sterilization. And uh, now the population decline has become visible because in India, uh, <coughs> monkey is our... Mm -hmm. So everybody feeds them and, you know, that God. increases God. their population. Num yes. Hanumanji, num <coughs> number two is in the, uh, like in the forest, the, for the, the fruit bearing trees are also being <coughs> failed. So yeah. elephant, the, the monkeys, they do not have much yeah, food yeah. in the forest. So they are forced to come uh, to our villages and our towns. So similarly, yeah. in Delhi also, uh, because we cannot kill the uh, thing, but since it is a capital region, so two things we can do. 
we can capture the monkeys we can sterilize them and we can translocate them to some other areas and make monkey colonies somewhere where they will not be able to come back and automatically the population will decline and the sterilization pro this procedure is very simple we can do it and in fact uh, i i feel uh, proud to tell you that assam government has also planned a monkey sterilization program in assam mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, you can uh, send a, a solution uh, and a, a proposal to the central government also. Hey, no, we, I can share my I can share our proposal that I have given to Assam government, and so I can share with you, sir. Yeah, Dr. Tripathi has to say something. Yeah, Dr. Sharma, what about the blue bulls, Nilgai? Because they also minister in a, in a farmer's field. Sir, but Nilgai is work. another big problem because. Uh, it, Called guy, so people uh, <laughs> think that it is go hatta. Like if you kill them, it will be go hatta, go bad. So that uh, in India nobody likes to do. And I also have information. In fact, uh, I objected to that. Like Bihar government, one uh, they have allowed uh, some culling of the blue bull uh, because they are damaging our farms. Uh, but uh, the, there are a lot of objections. Like the farmers themselves have objections to uh, killing of the blue bull. So therefore, even in Bihar, they could not continue. And I think even, even in UP, they have uh, practiced some uh, cases, but they stopped. Uh, here also, we can do sterilization program. But we need big fun for that because this is a big animal. They do not easily allow themselves to be captured. But our veterinarians can capture and sterilize them. Population decline will uh, be, you know, uh, visible slowly, not immediately. But I, I, I know that uh, the blue bull menace is a menace. It's not an ordinary conflict. Yeah, we agree. Uh, Dr. Namnithan is asking, uh, while translocation, how long the animal can be carried uh, upside down? Yeah, that is a good question. Actually, in India, we have never carried animals upside down uh, because we are not sure of that. And aesthetically, this looks very bad. And even, you know, in our, uh, our country, the welfare lobby is very strong. So if we start doing that, there will be a lot of human cry and they will drag us to the court. Uh, uh, just like I know one African elephant is there in Delhi. Uh, national Jew, capital Jew. So one African elephant, uh, and I am told that a 16-year-old girl has gone to the Supreme Court complaining about that the uh, elephant is badly kept and all that, as if she knows how it is goodly kept. Uh, but anyway, so here everybody knows. And those who really do not know, they know more. So the uh, problem is that. So uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, if it is properly done, yeah. scientifically done, it is not impossible. We can do it. And translocation, like even in Africa, when they carry animal upside down, they do only for a short distance. Suppose if it is a long distance, then they don't do it. Suppose there is a river through which the normal carries is difficult. So even in uh, the middle of Brahmaputra, we had one case uh, of a stray rhino. So in that case, we have hired the services of Indian Army. And uh, we plan to just capture the rhino there and just hang upside down and bring it to the other bank of the river. And probably the rhino didn't like the idea. And uh, you know he, she decided to swim herself. And uh, she came to the other side, and we captured and translocated in a normal way. So <laughs> we didn't uh, have that Very experience yeah. as of now. <laughs> But for a short distance, it is safe. Uh, uh, Doctor, uh, our director in NRC Mithun is asking, uh, what is the cost involved for night guard fencing? Whether it will be applicable for the Mithun also? Of course, sir. But night guard fencing, we don't use. We use night guard camera or night guard binoculars. Uh, our, uh, even our Kajiranga National Park, we have night guard binoculars and uh, night guard cameras. The fencing that is actually power fencing, solar powered fencing, uh, these are not very expensive. Uh, only thing is that 
maintenance is required because the grass will grow from the bottom and they will discharge the cable. So just to avoid that, you have to keep cutting the grass so that the electricity is not discharged. And only thing is the unit, uh, you need is solar panels and an energizer, which is uh, like depending on size of the area, uh, it is below one lakh, very uh, cost effective method. But for elephant, this is not foolproof because elephants are the most intelligent animal. And over the time, they realize that uh, we can overcome. So what they do, they bring one uh, pole from somewhere or a tree they uproot and throw it against the wall, a uh, fencing. So the fencing is broken, the electricity is discharged, and the entire herd will merrily cross over. Uh, it is very difficult to uh, contain the elephants uh, once they realize that we can cross this barrier. But other animals can be contained. Uh, Dr. Sama, how many species uh, of the elephant are known, especially in India? India, we have one species only, sir, that is the Asian elephant, Elephas maximus. Uh, in fact, not only India, the entire Asian countries, uh, we have Asian elephants in 13 range uh, countries across Asia. So India has the highest population, like uh, the total uh, Asian elephant population worldwide is 48,000. And in India alone, captive and wild together, we have 30,000, 27,000 wild and 3,000 captive elephants. So India has more than two thirds of the elephant population and the other elephants that is uh, in our neighboring countries also, like Nepal, Bhutan, or Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Bangladesh, and Indonesia, Thailand, and all that. So altogether, uh, even in China, they are. So 13 countries, they, uh, they are there. Genetically and phenotypically, they are almost uh, differences in India. We have two types of males. One is called Tasker. They have huge prominent tusk. These are actually modified incisors. And uh, the Makhanas, they don't have well-developed tusk. But if you go to Indonesia, all the males are Tuskers. Uh, this may be genetic selection or uh, some other reason, but genetically the elephants are same. One Dr. Prithiraj Fernandez uh, from Sri Lanka, he carried out a genetic study and he found only the elephants of Borneo are different. In Borneo, they have pygmy elephants. They are smaller in size and uh, their height, the like average height is 5.5 to 6 feet. And uh, they are not as hostile as the other Asian elephant types. Uh, and in Africa, they have two types of elephants, African elephant. Uh, one is the bush elephant, other is the uh, savanna elephant. Uh, genetically also, they are different. Uh, how the elephant can contribute in maintaining the wildlife? Uh, I, I, th I think your question is how the Elephants can be used in managing wildlife, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, very much useful. Actually, uh, I told you in India with our limited resources, we, even if we you uh, like desire, we are not given a helicopter. And even if a helicopter is given, so in our type of forest, which is canopy in nature, we cannot use a helicopter for various activities, but the elephants are very useful. We can take elephants uh, patrolling our area for, uh, you know, capturing translocation. Uh, and if you come to uh, parks like Kajiranga or Manas or say, for example, Dudua or Kanha Tiger Reserve. So in all those areas where they are dangerous mammals like say tiger, say rhino, in such a situation, elephants are very useful. You cannot manage a park like this without the help of the uh, trained uh, captive elephants. They are very useful indeed. And also, I told you, I have shown you a picture. Uh, human elephant conflict is a big issue. And we can very safely use the kunkis, the trained captive elephants, for managing the wild herds. We can drive them where uh, our life. Uh, and that of the villagers' life as well as their properties are safe. Uh, 
Dr. Pralay Mandal is asking, uh, we are taking this as a last question. Uh, is there any SOP, Standard uh, Operating Procedure, for providing oral administration of anti-TB drug in zoo animals? Because some zoo administration, uh, administering anti-TB drug to zoo animals, is there any SOP for administering this anti-TB uh, drug without screening for animals? Uh, actually, the anti-tuberculosis drugs are uh, like used in many zoos across India, of course, with uh, permission from the central zoo authority. And uh, unfortunately, I know Pralay Mandal, he's from Bengal, and we also work together. He knows it. He worked in uh, Jaldapara National Park. So actually, most of the zoos... The biggest problem is tuberculosis. Even in Guwahati Zoo, we had big problem with tuberculosis. But after oral uh, medication, it became possible because tuberculosis confirmation is also a very big problem. You do not have the BSL-2 stage laboratory everywhere and like identifying or demonstrating the mycobacterium uh, germs are very tedious and almost difficult for many zoos to afford. But the mm -hmm. anti-tuberculosis <clears throat> does are affordable. They are not very costly. And uh, it mean we can get it from the human medicine. So that is why people are using. And this has the support from Central Zoo Authority. So it is not illegal, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sharma. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Tripathi now uh, to uh, give the chairman's remark, concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agrawal. I think today Thank you, sir. You're, seeing, you're seeing a more than around more than 225 people that have joined on this platform only. And so such an interesting lecture. First, we'd like to congratulate Dr. Deke Sharma for, for attracting so many people, uh, audience uh, to his lecture. And uh, today we have a bounce audience. We have got uh, many senior people, uh, our esteemed DDG, uh, Dr. T.R. Sharma, there, and a few vice chancellors, Kalai uh, uh, University, uh, Professor R. Chandra Babu, and then Professor S.K. Rao. And uh, I'm seeing the many directors of ICR Institute across, you know, across division, from crop science, horticulture, animal science, so many directors are looking at and a large number of scientists, and also from many people from KVKs, and also universities, some professors also joined, and some retired people also like Dr. Lal Krishna and others have joined. So, so all, all have listened to your lecture, Dr. Sharma. So, the big congratulation to you. And uh, now we have seen that how Dr. Sharma has uh, now having worked for more than three and three and a half decades, and, uh, and uh, he has justified that how, why he is called the elephant, elephant man. So, and, and he has been given a uh, highest discipline award uh, for Padam Sri. For that, we also congratulate from a core of our hearts. We are veterinarians very happy that, uh, that uh, veterinarians like who are working in the field, working, working for, the, uh, for the wildlife and also for the animals, they're also uh, getting uh, Padam Sri awards. So that's a great achievement. And uh, from all fraternity of veterinary animal scientists, we, we come to Dr. Sharma. Uh, well, Dr. Sharma, topic was very interesting, uh, as earlier also, as, as you could see the number of participants here. And uh, wildlife, human wildlife conflict, how to manage it. And he has, a, he has a given one example that during 1804, we had a 1 billion population, and 2050, we are going to have almost 10, 10 billion population, so almost 10 times. So land remains same, forest is decreasing, Every, everything remains, but population increasing. So certainly this is all, you know, uh, if you if you just, you know, balance human and the wildlife, then like human is the more responsible for all these than, than the wildlife. So so we, we, we are the culprit so that uh, we, we are enclosing forest, and encroachment has really, you know, once their size is, for size is decreased, uh, they, they do not get proper forage and feed and water. And also, when when the ecosystem ecosystem balance is not there in the in the forest, then they, they come out. 
in, in search of food. For example, if you know, if you don't have carnivores in forest, so certainly herbivores, herbivores will be more. And, and when herbivores will be more, they will, they will all you know, destroy vegetation. And after that, they will come out of the forest. And, and so, so similarly, you know, there is a balance in the ecosystem. We had, we had a, we have already pyramid like a structure that how in the, in the pyramid uh, and forest and, and flora and fauna, each creation, each wild, each life is important in the system. And that, that is why when it is disturbed, then our ecosystem will disturb, and then this, this conflict starts coming. Dr. Sarma has started, you know, very, very, uh, very perfectly by the definition of what is conflict. And then he has defined that how uh, human wildlife conflict uh, looks like. And uh, he has given many examples that, that uh, by doing a lot of beautiful pictures, and he really, you know, took us around the forest and wildlife. And uh, given so many examples from uh, some elephants, some rhinoceros, and also snake, and uh, and uh, so many others also, and he also uh, also described the methods of uh, how how to manage this uh, human wildlife conflict uh, by by different methods like you know habitat management, physical barrier, early warning system, and uh, and population management, and and even you know, and finally. Even how to manage it uh, and the thermal camera, the trend formation. Uh, see, uh, we, we know that the wildlife conservation is a prime agenda for the government, and we are all doing 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 well in this direction. But still, we lack many many infrastructure and facilities to deal with. We, Dr. Sarma has told that how he has, he has improvised, he has, he has fabricated different different uh, different structures, different equipments to deal with. And, uh, and and if you go for the anesthesia, he is, he is specialized in anesthesiology, you know, anesthesia. So every animal has got, you know, kind of idiosyncrasy, and every animal has got a different dose, different system. And that is why wildlife people, they don't allow their animal, if very wildlife in captivity, they don't allow the animal to touch it, don't, don't allow anything to be given to them. So I, this difficulty I, I, I faced when, when we were for the, uh, for testing our COVID vaccine in animals, in, in leopard and tiger and lion. So uh, they, uh, with all difficulty, they allowed to give a few animals because they are scheduled one animal. So they are very precious also while, while they, are in, they are in wild, they are in the forest and in the captivity. They are very important for all of us. Dr. Sharma has also uh, I mean, answered all the questions and uh, by, by different, you know, the issue that there are some more questions I was seeing in the chat box. So, but with the paucity of time, we cannot take all. But certainly, the lecture has been impressive and uh, very, very interesting also. Uh, and perhaps everybody has enjoyed this lecture. And also, people will like to develop some love for the wildlife, no? Uh, the way sometimes we have seen in, 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 in the video, in the film, in the pictures, uh, so that how people are aggressive, they kill animal leopards, or lions, or tigers, poachers are there. Uh, so so that, that there are threats to wildlife also. Uh, and, and for all those things, we have got an uh, act also, and uh, plus we have got the rules also, conservation law also. So, uh, so with this, I think uh, today, today is, uh, is, is the talk was quite comprehensive, and uh, it has opened a new area of area for research also for the scientists who are sitting here. And, uh, and perhaps Dr. Sharma may be getting a lot of calls after this talk uh, because they will be interested to work in some, some areas and. Uh, and perhaps in, in, in uh, maybe in the in the surgery or in medicine or or, or in also and uh, the other way around that wildlife wildlife is important to maintain if they are also threat also because they they are also good, uh, I mean the habitat of diseases also so whenever we talk of any disease uh, disease control program we always we take a focus on wildlife also. Because if, if, the, if the disease, you know, maybe the pathogen carriers are in wildlife, then perhaps uh, our surveillance program, our disease control program may not be succeeded. So therefore, wildlife, wildlife is also important for, uh, for you know, uh, whenever we take up any national program for disease education. So um, I think uh, with this, uh, I will not speak more on that because we also develop many drugs, how we're going to take different combination of drugs. Individual drugs, commercial drugs, all he has been trying perhaps last 10 and a half, four decades. 
and uh, and those experiences must I hope that it must have been used by other other people other in the, in the wildlife sanctuary and uh, those in the captivity. Tuberculosis is a great problem in wildlife, especially in deer. That is quite productive tuberculosis in deer. So I think uh, uh, this is also one of the issue that even if you are able to control tuberculosis in humans or animals, how to control them, them in, in the wildlife. So that is also really search out uh, some methods, methodology, some drugs, and maybe not that exactly vaccines should be there to control tuberculosis in wildlife. So I think uh, we must give a big hand to Dr. B.K. Sharma because uh, of enlightening us for, for so many things on, on wildlife, especially on elephant. And with this, I, I thank the organizer, also the government department to chair this session. I, and also Dr. Agrawal, because he has been you know, doing 70, this is 70th lecture. And uh, at, uh, we were able to manage few lectures also in animal science and veterinary science. So the people, he has, been, he has been lectured from all walks of life. You know, it is not only science, agriculture, craft, horticulture, animal art, culture. And, uh, and even, even different acts, different commissions, people have been coming here. Uh, some, some spiritual people have also come, come in this, at this platform. I uh, mean, from engineering people, physics, mathematics, economics, so many, uh, I mean, stalwarts have come on this platform in the world structure. And today, Dr. Sarma has been a part of this platform also. So when this uh, India in the 75 years independence. So that, that, that's a great, uh, Dr. Dr. Gravan, for your, uh, you know, thank you, sir. Resilience, resilience <laughs> part throughout the year we've been managing it. You know? So thank you very much for organizing this session. I'm thank you, to... thank you, Dr. Tiwari ji, for chairing this session and for giving your uh, concluding remarks. And thanks to Dr. Sharma for excellent talk. Uh, I think it has ignited many, many minds. A lot of questions, uh, not only complimenting you, but curious to know the same thing for snakes, for peacocks, for every kind of uh, wildlife uh, which is affecting their fields, their their colonies, their cities, whatever is there. So I think uh, it's a big problem. Uh, it looks like from this, uh, from the comments uh, of all the participants. So thank you very much once again, uh, Dr. Sarma, and uh, I thank uh, all my participants, uh, our August audience, uh, who have gathered in a, uh, in a big number. It's not only the number of participants, but it is being live streamed in many halls. Uh, I got a message from Assam Agriculture University. I got a message from many universities that they are live streaming in a hall where number of students are sitting there. So it's so, so important to know. Uh, people, people are really querying that, what do you mean by elephant men of uh, India? So do they have number of more animal uh, elephants or what is that? <laughs> so anyway, uh, the things are uh, very interesting and that kind of affection should be more and more uh, with animals. I think we all should uh, love them. We all should care for them. And, uh, and there should be less and less uh, uh, conflict uh, with the wildlife. So all those things are really uh, very educative and uh, great learning for all of us. So thank you once again, uh, Dr. Sama, uh, for this uh, excellent you, talk and for agreeing this. Thank you. And namaskar to all everybody. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Namaskar.